because we're on an alien film, of course there's going to be guns, there's going to be cool futuristic weapons, and that is what we're on our way to see right now, to the armorer's truck, and see some of the cool weaponry they've developed for Covenant. The armor for this film's name is John Bowring. And to give you a sense of how legendary an armor he is, have you heard the phrase, that's not a knife, that's a knife? Yeah, Crocodile Dundee. John designed and made Crocodile Dundee's knife, and he's doing all the armaments for Alien Covenant. Let's talk to him. Oh, wow, look at this. These are, this is some of the armaments for, this is, for Covenant. Yeah, this is some of the armament. Some of it reproduction stuff that okay. we've made for stunt sequences to be lighter, um, safer, all those sorts of things. Now, when you're designing this stuff, is Ridley, are you guys thinking about pulse rifles and other parts of the alien universe? And Yes, we are, but because this is in the prequels, Ridley wanted the weapons in this to be real. Right. This needs to be modern, but you know, right. it needs to lead back to conventional weapons. Sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. This is the new rifle which the Australian Army is going to have. Oh, really? And uh, we we're very lucky that the factory made us some of these yeah, because they look very spacey. Yeah, they totally do. Um, so this is fascinating. The bolt is actually behind the trigger, which makes yes. it easier balance and less recoil. Longer barrel, Longer barrel. for shorter weapon. Right, yep. right, right. These rail systems, when I got them and said to the factory, we're going to build a rail system for them, they said, oh, damn, you're beating us to us. We've got it on the drawing board, but we haven't made it yet. Really? <laughs> yep. So are you helping them with their design process? Uh, we're working with some other companies on theirs. Yeah. Wow. But that was printed. That's, oh. that's aluminium. So it's um, 3D, 3D printed? printed. Oh, wow. Yeah. Centered? Um, yeah. 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 That is really cool. So what, people don't really realize how many weapons in movies are actually made of rubber and resin. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, much of what people are holding, if they're not firing. And it, they get heavy. They're you know, hard to use. Um, that, for instance, is one of our resin oh, pistols. Uh, yeah. Here, I'll hand you this so I don't. No worries. And, um, oh, wow. This is totally, yep. totally and that's, lightweight. That's the real thing. So Totally different. Very heavy wow. by comparison. Oh, it's a Tanfoglio. Yeah. I think of Tanfoglio as the worst name for a gun in the world. Very hard for people to pronounce. Well, it, it also doesn't denote danger to me. No. Right? Like, a, like you know, Colt, right? That, that's, you know, it's kind of a macho name, but Tanfoglio doesn't... Doesn't, doesn't really happen. No. <laughs> so overall, how many weapons are you producing for a film like Alien Covenant? I'll give you an idea. We have six hero rifles. Okay in style. Mm -hmm. We also have six hero pistols and we have 90 weapons. Wow. So those six are duplicated. Sure, sure. So we have a hero of each, a right. firing hero of each. Then we have soft, then we have hard, and any variations there on for special scenes. Now when you say firing, of course, these aren't firing any real rounds, they're firing blanks. These have they been modified blanks. so they could only fire blanks? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> are, are there ever actors, not to name names, but are there ever yeah. actors who make you nervous holding live firing weapons? Not many, because most of them have some degree of experience. Right. But as their job is to act, you have to be very careful to make sure that they don't forget that they're holding a live firing weapon and just point it in the wrong well, I mean, direction. And do you do a bit of education for every actor? Because I mean, we, I know I'm do. holding a rubber weapon, but I don't like leveling it and waving it around at people. Absolutely. I say this, that if you rely on one thing for safety, then you're relying on nothing because one thing will always fail. And the last thing you rely on is the weapon is pointed in a safe direction. Different armourers have different procedures. I always like them to hold the weapon up at the end of the take right. and finger off the trigger so I can actually see it. Right. Some armourers prefer it pointed down. They say, well, then the muzzle is further away from people's faces. But in a group of actors, I can't then see what's happening sure. and where it's pointed. So they could be pointing at someone's leg or yeah. something like that. So we have different, you know, both of them have their merits, both of them have their drawbacks. But so every every actor that comes on set needs to get a little bit of education. A little bit of education in two directions. One is in the firearms handling for the film you're doing, applicable to what 
maybe the timeline, mm -hmm. what was done in the Second World War, oh, wasn't done in Vietnam, they would what have. was done in Vietnam, wasn't done in um, Afghanistan, what was done in the Civil War, wasn't yeah. done in any of them. Um, so you give them instruction on the idiosyncrasies of firearms handling and training in those days, right? so that they look the part, and you give them safety training. So right. there are two facets of the training that we go through when we're training them. I was watching a movie from the 80s the other night, and the actors were all running around with their fingers right here. Yes. And it made me crazy <laughs> to just see that, because it's, it's, it's just terrible practice. It's terrible practice. And we do tend to bend things a little bit here, because during the Second World War, they were never trained not to put their finger on the trigger. Sure. But we tend to train them not to put their finger on the trigger for on-set safety. Yeah. So there is a little bit of change there. One of the great classics is the double-handled pistol hold, which virtually came into existence in the 60s. Right, right. Um, up until that time, most police forces, military, border patrol, all trained to fire one-handed. Right. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And it just changed in this very short period. Overnight. Are yeah. You, will you hold this? this I, I, we did a test on the show. We actually figured out that the very worst way to aim a, a handgun ever is that. Yes. It is. There's <laughs> no way to know what's going on when you're doing By the way, there's nobody over here. Um, <laughs> there's no way to be able to aim that. It, there's two types of people who were trained to hold their pistol sideways. Yeah. Flintlock cavalry, which you will see in old paintings. Really? Where they hold with the flintlock up. Oh, right, so that totally makes sense. And Chinese cavalry between the First World War and Second World War, where they issued the machine pistols. With the magazine facing up? Yeah, or? so when they held them sideways, they strafed. Ah, uh, because of the brrr. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. So there's only two types of people I know of who were ever trained to hold their pistol sideways, other than boys in the hood. Right. <laughs> <laughs>
and we'll make everyone into a sticky mess. Yeah, but not necessarily mouth safe. We made something that was mouth safe just because it's a good all purpose. It can be dressed on set, it can be on your skin, it can be in your mouth. Right, right, right. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that exactly. is just, whoa! That's disgusting. I can tell you just from a material standpoint, it's amazing that it's perfectly opaque on the end of my finger. Even in very thin consistency, it's super opaque. And I'm guessing it, this washes off pretty fast. Yeah, it's pretty good. Like all, all bloods will stain. Mm -hmm. We consider it as a non-staining, which means it just stains a lot rather than <laughs> you know, a hell of a lot. Do you, do you guys ever play practical jokes on each other with this stuff? No, not with the blood. No. No, with other things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's really dark. Well, look, the trick I reckon with good, good blood is it has to look dark when it's thick. But then then when, you, when you thin it out, it's got a... Oh, wow. That is down. absolutely beautiful. As someone who's, I mean, in my hands, I have about a total of 60 some odd stitches. I'm sure you yeah, have yeah. a fair number. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm very familiar with what blood should look like, and that's just looking fantastic. Yeah, we're pretty happy with it. Do you happen to have sure. a little jar that I could take home yeah, a little sure. jar of blood sure. as a souvenir? Absolutely, I'll give Gotta you a one. Gotta have that in my collection, right? Genuine alien blood? Have you got a Sharpie? Absolutely. I, 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 want, I, I want the inventor to sign it. This will be interesting at the TSA. That is a beautiful addition to my prop collection right there. Dude, thank you so much. Pleasure. I really appreciate it, guys. Awesome.